This is a debrief of task seven for drafting and interpreting financial statements, looking at AAT's second sample assessment. In this task, we need to be able to interpret the ratios provided and provide some commentary on them. So it tells us that Luke Berry is a shareholder of Walmington Limited. He has heard rumors that the company is experiencing financial difficulties and has asked you to analyze Wilmington's most recent financial statements to help him decide whether to keep or sell his shares. His primary concern is profitability. So that's what we need to focus on when we're providing our commentary. So the first one we've been given relates to our operating profit margin. So we can see that last year we had 9.2% and this year we have 12.6%. And we need to decide whether or not this is better or worse. So the operating profit margin shows us what percentage of the revenue remains after paying for our production costs and our administrative expenses and our distribution costs. So we can see that last year, 9.2% of our revenue was left over after paying for most of our expenses. Whereas this year, 12.6% of our revenue was left over after paying for most of our expenses. So that's a good thing. Yeah, more of our revenue has been kept after paying our expenses. So that means that the operating profit margin is better than last year. And then in the next part, it's asking us to say, what does this tell us about the company? And the way to approach this is on your scrap paper in your assessment, write out the formula for the ratio. So operating profit margin equals our operating profit divided by revenue. Now we know that the operating profit margin has increased, which we said is a good thing. So that could be because our operating profit has increased and or our revenue has decreased. So to help expand this and earn more marks potentially, let's work out what our operating profit is. We can see that in the next part of our formula. So our operating profit would be our revenue minus the cost of sales, minus the administrative expenses, minus the distribution costs. So if the numerator has increased, that could be because our revenue has gone up. And revenue may have gone up because possibly we have increased our selling prices. Or if the numerator has increased, it could be that we have reduced our costs in some way. So it could be that our cost of sales have gone down. So it, that could be because we've managed to negotiate cheaper purchase prices for our materials or somehow we've managed to reduce our overhead costs, or possibly we found alternative routes to distribute our goods to our customers and that's reduced our costs as well. So do you see by breaking down the operating profit into its component parts, we can say something about each of them and potentially each of them earns us a mark. Now also we've identified that the denominator falling may cause the improvement. So we've already said that revenue might go up, which causes the improvement in the numerator, but equally it could be that revenue has gone down, which has created the issue for us. Um, and therefore perhaps you know, the selling prices have, have gone down to try and uh, encourage people to try and buy from us. Again, we don't really know without any further data, but we're just speculating, but either of these could be a possible reason depending on, on the numbers. It could be if we're selling different types of product that we've changed the mix of our sales. So it just so happens that at the moment we're selling a, a variety of more profitable products compared with the previous year. So let's think about adding some answers to the, the box that they provided for us. So notice that there are uh, four marks for commenting on whether each of the four ratios 
is better or worse. That's going to be one mark for each of them. And then there are 16 marks available for our commentary. Again, for the four ratios, that means there's four marks per ratio. And when you look at AAT's uh, suggested solutions for the sample assessments, they do provide two marks for each comment that you make. So that means we need two comments to be able to get our full marks in this case. So what could we talk about here? So but possibly talking about the conflicting revenue answers would be a bit confusing, but we can talk about the, the other points here. So it could be that we have negotiated cheaper purchase prices, which has helped to reduce our cost of sales. And the second point, think about the administrative expenses, that somehow we've controlled our overheads better. So in our description, we talked about all the other issues as well, but you know, there's only two that we need to be able to get our marks for this particular question. But notice how breaking down the formula into its component parts just gives you more things to talk about. The next ratio is our quick ratio or acid test ratio. And this has fallen from 1.3 to 0 0.8. So this ratio looks at our receivables and cash on the numerator divided by our current liabilities. And it gives us an indicator of whether or not we have enough highly liquid assets to be able to pay off the liabilities that are due within one year. So, you know, hopefully receivables will be paid in 30 days and cash is cash already. So, you know, we want really this number to be at least one. So we can see that last year we had a score of 1.3. So, yes, we had enough liquid assets to cover our liabilities, whereas this year we have 0 0.8. So we don't have enough highly liquid assets to be able to pay off those liabilities. So we can see that in this case we have a worse result than we did last year. Now we need to be able to explain something about the company. So what we can see though, because it has got worse, that we have potential liquidity problems now. You know, we don't have enough liquid assets to cover our short-term debts. So we may struggle to be able to pay those. Now remember the current liabilities are due within one year, so potentially we still have inventory we could sell to generate more cash to be able to pay those off. But remember, we're looking at the quick ratio where we're focusing only on the highly liquid assets rather than the current ratio, which would include inventory as well. So as well as understanding that we have liquidity problems, again, what could be the cause of this? So again, by breaking down our formula into its component parts, we know that the quick ratio has gone down, which means that the numbers in the numerator may have gone down or the numbers in the denominator may have gone up. So what can this tell us about the business? That potentially our receivables figure has gone down, possibly because of lower sales, although that wouldn't be consistent with the improvement in our operating profit margin that we talked about just now. Or it could be that our cash has fallen, which is a, a possibility. Or it could be that for some reason we are delaying paying our suppliers, or perhaps we've negotiated new terms with our suppliers, so our current liabilities are bigger at the moment. So we probably only need two answers in the comments box, uh, but so yeah, here are three uh, just, just for your video now. Now notice that we're just writing some brief notes here. Uh, just be warned that in your assessment, yeah, a two word answer doesn't necessarily prove that you understand what you're talking about. So it's always better to write full sentences to give yourself a best chance of demonstrating that you really understand what you're talking about to the marker. But for the purpose of the video, we're just writing brief notes because you've got the audio content to supplement uh, what you're seeing on the screen. Next, we have the gearing ratio, and we see that last year we had 54.1%, and that's fallen to 40.3%. So debt divided by debt plus equity is the formula for gearing, 
and it's showing us the proportion of the capital employed formed by debt. So we are funding the business through long term loans and through money provided by the shareholders and how much of that is part of our debt. So if the figure is really big, it shows that we're borrowing quite a lot of money to fund the business. And if the figure is quite small, then it means that we are not using so much borrowing. So in this case, we've gone from 54% to 40%. And that suggests that we are in a better position than last year. Although there is room for interpretation here because for our debt, we might be saying, I know, paying 5% interest on our borrowings, but our shareholders would probably be expecting perhaps 15% return on the money they've put into the business. So we just need to be aware that debt is a relatively cheap form of funding the business compared with asking the shareholders for money. So if our gearing goes down, it means we're taking less advantage of that. Nevertheless, in the AAT sample assessment answers, it says that this is better. So we need to use that as a guide for answering this question. And gearing has fallen, that's better. So in the next part then, we need to explain uh, something about the company relating to this. So the fact that gearing has gone down would suggest that the business is less risky. So if the company wanted to borrow money in the future, it would be easier for them to do that because the borrowing is relatively small compared with the other sources of finance that the company is using. So what does that tell us then? So if gearing has gone down, again, that tells us that possibly the numerator has gone down. So possibly they've been paying off some of their borrowings. And that would be consistent with the comment that we made earlier. That remember, our quick ratio got worse. And one of the possible reasons for that was because cash was falling. So if they've used their cash to pay off their long term liabilities, that would explain why the, the gearing has gone down as well. So notice that if you can talk about some of the links between the ratios, you are going to be getting credit for that. But the other reason why gearing may have gone down is possibly because the denominator has gone up. So possibly debt's gone up. Again, that would be inconsistent with what we've just said, but it could be that our equity has gone up. And again, that links with our operating profit margins improving, because if we make profit, and we don't pay that as dividend, that's going to increase our retained earnings and increase our equity. So it could be that our gearing position is improving just because of our long term profit making in the business. Or possibly we have issued new shares to the shareholders to raise finance. So here are a couple of comments about the business. Finally, we're looking at inventory turnover. Now, remember, there are two formulas for judging inventory performance. We've got inventory days and inventory turnover. And in this case, we're focusing on inventory turnover. And we can see the figure has fallen from 10.6 times to 7.9 times. So the formula for inventory turnover is cost of sales divided by inventory. And it's telling us how many times a year do we go through our inventory? So last year, we'd have our inventory and we would consume it and then we'd buy some more inventory and then we'd consume it and then we'd buy some more and so on. And we would do that 10.6 times during the year. Whereas now when we buy inventory, we only turn it over 7.9 times during the year, which means that it is taking us longer to use our inventory. Yeah, we are consuming our inventory on a slower basis and that's not good. So we can conclude that our figure is worse than last year. You know, basically, we're holding on to our inventory for a longer period before we consume it. 
And if we are holding on to the inventory for longer, that may be causing us higher storage costs. What are the possible causes for this here? Why are we holding on to the inventory for longer? Well, if you remember when we were talking about our operating profit margin, we said there that potentially our purchase prices have gone down. We're buying the inventory, inventory for a cheaper price, and that's helping us to make a better profit margin. Now, how could we be doing that? Well, possibly we are bulk buying the inventory. And by bulk buying, it's allowing us to get a cheaper unit cost. But it does mean that we're having to hold on to it for longer to be able to achieve those bulk purchases. Then in part B of the question, we're asked to recommend whether Luke should keep or sell his shares based on profitability. So if we just remind ourselves about the ratios, so we can see that in terms of the operating profit margin, that it was better than last year. Okay, so some of the other issues were, were less good. So yes, we saw that the acid test ratio was worse, uh, inventory turnover was worse, but profitability is better. And on that basis, we should decide to keep the shares. And then in part two, specify one other profitability ratio you could calculate to help Luke make his decision. So we need to be able to remember all the different uh, ratios that are available. So we could, for example, use the return on capital employed, uh, or we could use the gross profit margin. So in the, the question they gave us the operating profit margin, well, there's also a gross profit margin available as well, isn't there?